The Tolkien Road, Episode 89, The Lord of the Rings, The King of the Golden Hall, Part 1. Hey there, fellow travelers. Welcome to the Tolkien Road, a long walk through Middle-earth. On this episode, we continue our journey through the Lord of the Rings with the first part of Book 3, Chapter 6, The King of the Golden Hall. Before we get started, why not hop on over to iTunes and leave the Tolkien Road a rating and feedback? It's a great way to show your support for the show and takes less than a minute. Thanks for listening, and enjoy. Hello everyone, welcome to the Tolkien Road. This is John, this is episode 89, and Greta's here with me. As up, always. Greta? Yes, as always. Um, have we done every episode together? All 89 so far? I think so. Except for the ones where you read your book, right? Oh, were those yeah, not, that's right. Were those episodes? Were those yeah, they were episodes? for a little while, and then I uh, I, got, I got greedy and pulled them away. You did? And now I saw them on truemythspress.com. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, then maybe they technically don't count. So, yes. Yeah. We have done every episode together. No, well, there you go. Amazing. Uh, yeah, actually, I think I did count those as episodes. So you know, if maybe our numbering is a little off, given that those are no longer on there. Uh oh. But whatever. How many of those were there? Huh? How many of those were there? I think there were like five. So. So maybe we're actually on episode. Uh, maybe 82. this is eighty-four. Oh, eighty-four. Yeah. Um. Oh well. <laughs> doesn't really matter. Whatever. We just need to make sure we get it straight so we can party like bosses when we hit episode 100. We're just, you know, it, those were episodes at one point, so we're just going to keep it. This is, you know, epi- we're going to okay. keep the current numbering scheme. So this is epi- episode 89. So only 11 more until our 100th episode. Mm-hmm. we got to do something, like, awesome for 100. We've got to, like... What do you have in mind? Like a party. Like any normal podcast team would do for a hundredth episode okay you know like shoot off fireworks and make everybody listen to the loud noises yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. right on maybe Uh, we could make some special hobbit ale okay yeah i'm good with just doing another episode but if you want to do something (laughs) special that's cool with me um maybe we could do a video podcast for that episode maybe maybe we will people could just like watch us talk yeah instead of listen to us talk and that way they could see our party hats uh huh. Uh, oh, we uh we gotta do our we gotta do our picture for this episode. Oh, is that like a thing now? We're yeah. doing one for every. Yeah. Uh huh. Every episode. Yeah. Oh. Okay. There you go. <clears throat> okay. Where's the camera again? It's up there, right? Right. Okay. Are we just doing one take? <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, you can you can do whatever pose right. you want to do. Okay. That's, that's a pretty good one. That's going to be real nice. That is going to be real nice. Except you can't see my Villanova sweatshirt, which I'm very proud of. Oh. Wait, can you? No. Oh, fudge. We can try it again if you want. Yeah, let's try it again. All right, you got to kind of sit up. Can we, like, just do a disclaimer that we're recording, like, early on a Saturday morning for this one, which explains why I look the way I do? Who cares? <laughs> okay, hold on. <clears throat> I'm proud of my Villanova just, sweatshirt. Just kind of boost yourself up. Boost? Why well, no? My chair's lower than yours. Okay. I, I, I kind of tilted the screen up, too. Oh. So. Okay. There we go. Yeah. But now you're, like, way forward. I know. You know you just, okay, so, there we go. Yeah. Got it. Okay. All right. That It looks like it's it's backwards now. That's okay. People will know. Oh, They'll no, know wait, what no, it's supposed not. to say. Go. I like that one. Yeah. That's good. Post it. Okay. I'll I'll post I'll post it after the uh, whatever I'll just post it now. How do I do this? If we're gonna do this regularly, we need to decorate the studio. Well like, I know, I know, seasons. we're working on it. Okay. We're working on it. Are we? Yeah. Okay. As long as you say so. I I do say so. Okay. Well I trust you that um, we're working on it. 
Let's see here. If it was going to be like a long, no, it won't. drawn out process, we could do it later. You told me to post it, so I'm I know, but it. now I'm worried that we're boring our listeners and they're just going to leave. Well, uh, that's why you can fast forward on most podcast apps. But um, I know they're all thrilled to hear us to hear the process of me posting this. I'm sure stuff. they are. So I'm sure no one. They're on the edge of their seats. That's right. Will, will he be able to do it? Let's see here. Of course I will. Oh, I forgot you were putting him on Facebook. Yeah. Now everybody's going to see it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, this <sighs> is so not good for my private nature. Well. My introvert status is really struggling right now. Stat, is that your, just your all-time status, introvert? Huh? Your all-time status is just introvert? Yes, introvert. Introvert, introvert, which is why I'm not on Facebook. Because... Let's see y'all. That's just not, just not my thing, you know? Episode 89, underway. All right, it's there, peeps. There you go. And Greta looks, looks like t- surprised that it's underway. <laughs> I do. So you're like... You're like, what? All right. Wait, I was still drinking my coffee. What are yeah. we doing? Okay. Now that um, that's done. Then only like eight up five minutes of air time, but right. okay. Right. So that's done. Um, so let's talk uh, announcements, correspondence, all that kind of stuff first. All right. All right. As always. All right. Um, so, had a, so the other day, uh, Thursday was the Feast of the Immaculate Conception yes, it was. Uh, for the Catholic Church, and I... I wrote a post on TrueBest that you can go check out. It's five Marian figures of Middle Earth. Um, so you yeah. might enjoy that. It's good. Yeah. It has some cool artwork in it, too. It does. It does by... Um, it's a picture of Nienna, who's Nienna. one of the Valar. It's a cool picture. I know. I love that picture. It's by um, it's by an artist on DeviantArt named uh, Riso Ania. Hmm. So, yeah, you should check out a lot of all of her artwork because it's really good. Um, but go check out that post and, uh, you know... Feel free to comment if you like it, uh, or if you just have something you want to say yourself. So right on, right on. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, gotta gotta hit the. Uh, so for some reason, um, Super Josh Skywalker. I didn't I didn't get his haiku for the last episode oh, for the last chapter. So not again. I know, I know. I you know it never fails. It's an epidemic. Well, there's so much haiku coming at me now that it's like. You know, it's hard to keep track of it all. So you got to figure out a system. I do. I do. But there's a lot of, I got a lot of stuff on my to-do list. You know? I know. Maybe it's something that I could help you with. Huh? Maybe it's something I could help you with. Because I do like no production at all for the hike, for the, for the episode. I just show up and look cute. I mean, sound cute. Okay. So. And try to be funny. So maybe, maybe that's something I could do. So do we like, you, do we set up a, an email address just for haiku? Just for haiku? That might be a good and idea. And then you collect them? You think that would be too confusing for the uh, listeners? Not if we, not if we just say send your haiku to this email address. Okay, I would be totally down with that. Yeah, I would love to be the haiku administrator. Okay, well, we'll figure out how to get that rolling, and we'll let you know for next time. I don't want, okay. I don't want to just make it up here on the spot. So no, we'll, no, we'll no. We'll get that rolling. Yeah, we'll for get next it, episode. Yeah, we'll work on it. All right, so we're gonna read since you know our rule is that if we miss someone's haiku that they submitted on time, then we read it first on the next episode. So we're going to read Josh's haiku for chapter five. Oh, right. Yeah. So this is for the white, the chapter, the white rider. I'm kind of glad that it was just missed and not re- like that he did, that he sent one and we just missed it. So I was starting to get a little down that we hadn't heard from I know. Super Josh Skywalker in a while. Well, there is a new Star Wars movie coming out in like a week. Right. So he might just be like going into just complete hiding or something like that. Like in preparation. In preparation. Yeah. yeah. It might just be like. Do, undertaking some tremendous like media fast in order to just cleanse his soul to be prepared for the worthiness to be worthy of <laughs> you know probably, the new Star Wars film. Probably not far from the truth, actually. Yeah. So. Okay. I'm sure that's probably it. It probably, probably is. Exactly right. We'll just we'll just give him a blanket, you know, pass mm-hmm. whenever there's anything new Star Wars coming out. That's right. Okay. Deal. All right. Uh, so I'll read haiku one by Josh, and then you can read haiku two. Oh, there's two. Yeah. Sweet. All right. Haiku one. Fair Pythian words, spoken clear and yet unclear. Elf Lady Heralds. Mm. 
It's really pretty. Yeah, it, it is really pretty. I don't know if I pronounced that word Pythian right. I'm just going to ask you what it means. Because <laughs> because I want to pronounce part of me wants to pronounce it Python. You know, like like Python. Oh, like the snake. Yeah. What does it mean? Let's see. I don't know. Let's look it up. Leave it to Josh to use some big words that we don't know. All right. Um, <laughs> let's see here. That's what we get for having a classics major. Uh, Pythian refers to a Canadian multinational corporation that provides data <laughs> consulting and managed services for revenue generating and unusual valuable technology. All right, we just adver- we just advertise for them, so they've got to pay us now. I'm sure that's what Josh was getting at. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, let's see here. Um, the Pythia. Let's see here. Uh, yeah, like I'm gonna know what that means. All right, for pronouncing. Um, well, let's see here. Has to do with something Greek. Uh huh. The Oracle of Delphi was the name commonly known as the Oracle of Delphi was the name given to the high priestess of the temple of Apollo at Delphi, who also served as the oracle. So that's what he's talking about. He's talking about Pythian basically means um, oracle. Yeah, they're, they're like words of an oracle, right? They're like, what is uh, an oracle? So the oracle in Greek mythology was like, you know, this, this like uh, God-like being that lived up on this mountaintop. Okay. Right. And you would go to the oracle to receive like a prophetic word. Right. Oh, I um, see. Oh, that's, that's my very then. that's my very layman's terms explanation of it. Um, so I think that haiku he's referring to he's referring he's obviously referring to Galadriel. Right, Galadriel. He speaks of the elf right. lady. Right, right, right. Um, and so that he would be referring to the word spoken to Aragorn and Gimli and Legolas. Right, right. Got it. Yeah. So, well, but we still don't know how to pronounce it. Let's I love how we always learn something new from Josh's haiku. I mean, yeah. I'm totally going to use that word now once we figure out how to pronounce it. I, I think it's Pythia. I think it's, but let's let's see if I can figure it out from this. It has a Greek character in it. Yeah, that's the theta. So that's that. That's not that's not an issue. Um, kit, lid, fill, bin. So we got it. Yeah, Pythia. Okay. Yeah, Pythian. There you go. Pythian. Very good. Right nice, on. nice one, Josh. As nice. always. All right, you got. Number All right, number two. two. Yeah, yes. Let me pull it over here a little bit more so it's easier for you to All see. All right. Onwards to Rohan. There the chief sits, sick and bare. Gallop now. Gallop. Gallop. Um, gallop. Yes, did I pronounce that correctly? Gallop. Or should it be gallop? Gallop. It's gallop. I know it's gallop. I'm being silly. <laughs> okay, good, good, good. Sick and bare. Nice. Sick and bare. All right. Um, no, I like that. You know, Josh, he submitted one that was kind of like, you know, more like meditative and mm-hmm. observant and then mm-hmm. the second one's like onwards yep full of energy that's right and excitement mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. good stuff nice balance well done all right oh gotta stretch okay Ugh. all right sorry <laughs> I, I just had to stretch I you had to stretch feel the stretch coming that was on. a very loud stretch well uh, it was a good one it was okay good it was a really good stretch now i'm ready now now i'm warmed up now i'm ready to go okay all right. Um, Give me fifty. Co- correspondence. We got we got quite a bit of correspondence to go through. Oh, sweet. Um, yeah, uh, a lot of people commenting on shadow facts. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, wanting to wanting to educate us on shadow facts. We must have come across as kind of ignorant, huh? Well, we asked. We asked for help. We we postulated some thoughts on. Oh, where he came from? That's came right. From. Like, was he from like a Val, like Valinor, or exactly? Whatever. So okay. we'll get to that stuff. But um, we okay. have a couple of non-shadow facts pieces of correspondence. So the okay. first is from a new listener, Clay Devoe, or at least a new um, correspondent. Uh, he says, Clay. "Hey, John and Greta, your podcast is awesome. Oh, thanks, thank, thank you, Clay. You, Clay. Uh, thanks for it." Um, he says. I have started rereading Lord of the Rings recently and discovered your podcast last week. I have downloaded all the episodes pertaining to the trilogy, and I'm working through them as I read. It's su- super awesome. Thanks, guys. Yay! Well, Woo-hoo. thank you, Clay. It's always, uh, it's always it's great to hear from a, a new listener. Absolutely. New, new correspondent. And Especially such, such glowing praise. It's, I know. I know. We really appreciate the it. The wind beneath our wings. Thank Absolutely. you, Clay. Absolutely. Good to hear from you. Thank you, sir. And, right uh, back again. Yeah, stay in touch. Stay in touch. Um... Next up was uh, Aaron Teeson. Um, Aaron the Reason. You're Aaron the Reason, Teeson. Teeson. Yes. That's right. He says, greetings again. Here are my haiku for the King of the Golden Hall, part one. 
I think these should go with the first part if you stop where I think you will stop. But I was wondering with these uh, split episodes if we could know ahead of time where you are stopping in the chapter. Mm. So that way we know exactly what to write our haikus for. That's... Yeah, I'll get... That I'll, would be good. I'll, I'll, I'll start to figure that out, um, you know, for each episode. Now, for this one, it won't apply since we're just... Next episode's going to be the end of this chapter. Right. Um, but as we go forward and there are other split chapters, you know, I'll, I'll make sure it's clear where the halfway point is. Sounds good. Yeah. Good, good. Thanks. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so we'll get to question. his haiku yes. uh, at the end of the episode. Perfect. All right. Um, Mary Grace. Um, Mary Grace. Mary Grace was a... All right, uh, she says, uh, Mr. Carswell, I have written a haiku and a kind of longish poem for part one of The King of the Golden Hall. A note, I don't know if this is an answer to your questions about shadow facts, but in the letters of J.R.R. Tolkien, letter 168 specifically, she says, I think that shadow facts went with Gandalf across the sea, though this is not stated. Shadow facts came of a special race, being, as it were, an elvish equivalent of ordinary horses. His blood came from west over sea. Thus, your point about shadow facts being a horse of Orame might be nearer the truth. Uh, and she says, I shall do some more research and find out. Hmm. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, Special race. Yeah. So, it, you know, it sounds like, it, it certainly sounds like if he's not, a, if he himself is not from over the wet, if he himself is not from Valinor, he's descended mm-hmm. from a race of horses that's from Valinor. Yes. That makes sense. So, yeah. Right. Because it's basically like the Elvish equivalent, right? Exactly. Well, yeah. so she sent in... Uh, a haiku and then a longer poem so we'll get to that uh, a bit later Perfect. and then um greg uk greg uk good old greg university of kentucky as i like to call him um he says greetings carswells hopefully i'm just in time to get a haiku in for this week's episode you are um uh, and he says i need to actually pick the books up and start reading them again is the only one i've reread recently is the silmarillion i'm halfway through some uh, some pratchett at the moment uh, though some, uh, though so maybe in the new year. Anyway, so Pratchett is an off. I I know him. I I know of him. I've never read anything by him. Oh, that's what he's uh, reading right now. Yeah, okay. that's uh, what who is it? Let's see here. Uh, Terry Pratchett. Terry Pratchett. Um, Sir Terence David John Terry Pratchett. Wow, it's quite a mouthful. That is. Um, but he's been knighted, so that's awesome. Yeah. Oh, he. That's right. He wrote the Discworld um, series. Um, which is, I've always, I've always kind of wanted to read that stuff. Um, hmm. But, uh, 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 oh wait, no, I'm thinking is it of something fantasy different. as well? But anyway, yeah, it's, it's fantasy. Okay. So, um, so anyway, that's Greg's shout out to uh, Sir Terry Pratchett, Perfect. whose works he's nice. reading right now. I like it, I like it. Um, and, and I'm sure Pratchett was inspired, you know, heavily influenced by Tolkien coming in the time oh, that he did. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's rel- you know, of course, relevant in that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he leaves us with his uh, haiku there, which we'll get to, and he okay. says, "I'm counting." Uh, let's see. And as for the great uh, brooch debate, it's old news now. I know it's spelled brooch, but pronounced brooch. The English language is a fickle mistress. Yes, indeed it is. Indeed. So it is. I was right. Well, yeah. I mean, I knew mm-hmm. you were right. But, mm-hmm. I know. You know, we still like to. We like to mess around. Yeah. Give each yeah. other our time. Yeah. Um. He says, even though I don't contribute every week, I do mean to, but the days just seem to disappear. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Tell it to the judge. <laughs> Tell it to the judge. I have no idea what he's talking about. My days never seem to disappear. Ever. Yeah, I, I, they I must last have. last like 26 hours. I must have like extra hours in my day. You must. You know, I don't know. You just charmed like that? No, it's all right. We, you know, we, 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 uh, we miss you whenever you don't contribute, Greg, but, mm-hmm. uh, but we understand. Yeah, absolutely. Um, he says it feels like I it feels like I do because you keep singing the haiku themed the haiku theme tune and nailing it. Oh, so, we're nailing it! But, yes, finally. You know, he says, uh, you know, I mean, he makes a good point. Greg, Greg could just be, like sit back for the rest of the existence of this podcast and just be kind of like, my work is done. That's true. Every time he hears the haiku theme, <laughs> he has uh, he's made a lasting contribution. He's done his fair share. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, but absolutely. we still like to hear from him. Absolutely. And um, we're using the word absolutely a lot. I just noticed. Absolutely, we are. <laughs> absolutely. That's positively. gonna be the word. You know what we should do? What? We should do like this thing. I don't know. Um, it's a probably a rip off the Ellen DeGeneres show, but she has sometimes with guests, they have like this secret word. That they're supposed to work in as mm-hmm. many times as they can through the course of their conversation. Uh-huh. We should have a secret word that we like try to use throughout the course of the conversation, and then we can have our listeners guess 
what our secret word was. Hmm. I think that would be fun. Okay. So, like, just for example, like, our secret word could be, um, it could be guitar. Yeah. Right? Uh-huh. And then we just need to see how many times we can work the word guitar into whatever we're talking about. But we can't uh-huh. go out of our way. We can't just, like, randomly change the subject to music or whatever. Like, it has to be, it has to seem fluid. Yeah. Right? Because it's supposed to be a secret. Yeah, that might be fun. I think it would Maybe be Maybe we fun. can start doing that next episode, too. Yeah, I think we should. All right, you're in charge of coming up with the word. Okay. Every time. Deal. So you now have more res- two responsibilities. I'm loving it. Haiku, the haiku queen, and... Um, and the secret word and the queen. Secret, and the secret word. You know what, dude? Bring it. Bring it. I'm ready. I'm ready for more responsibility. You're the warden of the secret word. I love it. Yeah. Yes. Um, this day's getting better and better. <laughs> what day is already off to a great start for Greta. <laughs> All right. Um, and then Mary Grace had another uh, another comment. She said, P.S. I did not know sophomore meant wise fool. Fun fact, I'm a sophomore in high school. <laughs> so Mary Grace, for the time being, is our resident wise fool. Yes. All right. Yes. Awesome. Very cool. Uh, Love it. Let's see here. Josh. Uh, okay. Yeah. Josh was just, yeah. Josh was. Um, uh, Telling you where his haiku was. Yeah. It was, I think it was my fault that I didn't get the haiku. I, I changed was. my Twitter handle and I think he probably sent it to my old Twitter handle. Oh. Why I'm, you got to be changing your Twitter handle? I, I'm trying to figure out the whole like Twitter thing. Like, yeah. Who, I'm trying to figure out who in the world I am on Twitter. I'm just like, and how to set it up and all that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. I'm really bad at social media. That's why I just we're just not, not social to do it. media. We people. are not social social media people. Yeah. Not our not our thing. Um, let's see, y'all. All right, and then Matt Matt Scarrett's, uh, uh he wrote in. He said, "Hi, John and Greta. Hey, Matt. What's up? Um, Matt, Matt, what's up?" He said uh, he's also commented on Shadow Facts. He said this might be too late to make it on your next show. Uh, not too late, but I found some information regarding Shadow Fax's backstory in Appendix A, Part 2, which describes how King uh, Eorl of the Mark tames uh, uh, Felorof, I think I'm saying that name right, a wild horse who had killed Eorl's father, Leod. Eorl later rides Felorof to the aid of Gondor in the Battle of Kalinarthon. Oh, I and, think that's mentioned. Yeah. Uh, is it in this chapter? Well, you know, I think I think... I'll pause on Matt's comment for a moment. I think I want to do a separate episode just on the history of Rohan from the appendix, mm. you know, at some point okay. soon. So we'll talk more about how that all, what that all means. Okay, sounds good. Um, and uh, and he says, and the breed of horses descended from Felaroth became the uh, Mearas, the mm. horses and the kings of Rohan. Oh, okay. Shadowfax is called the greatest of these, and it says of their ancestry, men said of them that Bema, whom the Eldar called Orome, must have brought their sire from west over sea. Hmm. So it seems that your guess about Orome's horses was indeed correct. Great job with this episode. Hmm. Thanks, Matt. Yeah. Um, awesome. And, uh, yeah. So I, I, I don't think it specifically ever calls out that, you know, Shadow... So so it sounds like the, it sounds like the truth here. Here we go. It sounds like the truth about Shadow Facts is that he himself was not from Valinor, but he was descended from a race of horses that came from Valinor. Got it. So, so it's in his lineage. Right. It's in his blood. Mm-hmm. Got it. Yes. Yep. All right. Very good. Awesome. Thank you, and, Rob. Uh, and then uh, Rob, well, there's this haiku, and then Rob, Rob, the man, the myth, the legend, Fang Man, um, he writes in, and, again, about Shadow Facts, and he says, Dear John and Greta, you were inquiring about the origin of Shadow Facts in the last episode. Here's what I know, mostly from Appendix 1. Um uh, he says, I think he's, I think he's basically going to recount the same history that we got from uh, Matt in his previous comment. Okay. Um, uh, I'm going to go ahead and read what uh, Rob said, just in case there's some additional info. Sounds Leod, father good. of Yorl the Young and king of the uh, Eotheod, uh, captured a white foal, which quickly grew into a great horse, fair and proud, but no man could tame it. When Leod dared mount him, he was thrown and, and struck his head and died. Errol hunted this horse, and coming upon him called out, Come hither, Mansbane, and get a new name. Uh, Felaroth, this horse, was named, and from him the Mearus were sired, the mm. lords of horse that only the king of the mark and his sons were permitted to ride until the days of Gandalf. Men said that Orome must have brought their sire over from the west of the sea. Um, mm. And he okay. says, footnote for Greta, it is said that when Gandalf sailed over the sea into the uttermost west, the love of master and steed was so great that Shadowfax and Gandalf would not be parted. 
So it was that Shadowfax uh, sailed on the boat of the Ring Bearers and came at last to Valinor. Oh. Cool. That is very cool. Nifty. Huh. I love that idea of a horse riding on a boat. <laughs> I, I, I feel like he had to get a little stir crazy for the journey, though. He probably you know did. He probably did. Yeah. But, but you know, just see him like walking around the decks and mm-hmm. you know, eating his hay while they sail. And that's kind of a. I've never thought of horses on. But boats I, I mean, before. I guess I guess you know because there weren't any horse. I don't think there were. It's. I don't think there were horses in. The, in the new world prior to the coming of the Europeans, like, you know, prior to Columbus's time. So, you know, like, they had to travel over at some point on smaller ships. So. Yep. That's true. Anyway. That's true. Just a thought. Yeah. Yeah. Good thought. Okay. Um, so, we learned a lot about shadow effects this morning. Heck Thanks, yes, everybody. we did. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Nicely done. Nicely Shadow done. Max is awesome sauce. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, I think that was all the correspondence this time. Okay. Let's see um, what's next. So I think we're ready to talk about the episode. Ready to oh, talk really? about the chapter. Yeah. All right. Let's do it. All right. So um, chapter six of book three, The King of the Golden Hall. Um, when we left off... Uh, Gandalf had just finished catching up Aragorn and Gimli and Legolas on, you know, everything about um, what had been right, going, what had on going on when he, since, while he was uh, away. Since he was away, since they thought he was dead. Right. Um, and uh, and he says, now it's time for us to head to, um, to head to Edoras. We need to go see King Theoden. Right. So they head on to King to see King Theoden. And this is in Rohan. That's right. Okay. That's right there in the land. So Rohan is the region, right? It's like yeah. the region of Middle Earth they're in. Okay. And then um, Edoras is the city, that's the capital of Rohan. Okay. All right. Got it. So so that's how to think about it. Okay. Okay. Um, so they're riding. They're riding across the the plains of Rohan on their way um, to Edoras, and uh, I wanted to read this. Uh, you know, Tol- Tolkien. Tolkien was really had a had a gift for describing. Like landscapes and everything, yeah. so putting them in words. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to uh, to read this, you know, opening passage here about um, when Shadowfax suddenly stops and neighs, and Gandalf points ahead. Gandalf says, "Look," and they lifted their tired eyes. Before them stood the mountains of the south, white-tipped and streaked with black. The grasslands rolled against the hills that clustered at their feet and flowed up into many valleys, still dim and dark untouched by the light of dawn, winding their way into the heart of the green mount- of the great mountains. Immediately before the travelers, the widest of these glens opened like a long gulf among the hills. Far inward, they glimpsed a tumbled mountain mass with one tall peak. At the mouth of the vale, there stood like a sentinel a lonely height. Above its feet, there flowed as a thread of silver the stream that issued from the dale. Upon its brow, they caught, still far away, a glint in the rising sun, a glimmer of gold. Speak, Legolas, said Gandalf. Tell us what you see there before us. Legolas gazed ahead, shading his eyes from the level shafts of the new risen sun. I see a white stream that comes down from the snows, he said. Where it issues from the shadow of the vale, a green hill rises upon the east. A dike and mighty wall and thorny fence encircle it. Within there rise the roofs of houses, and in the midst, set upon a green terrace, there stands aloft a great hall of men. And it seems to my eyes that it is thatched with gold. The light, the light of it shines far over the land. Golden, too, are the posts of its doors. There men in bright mail stand, but all else within the courts are yet asleep. Edores, those courts are called, said Gandalf, and Meduseld is that golden hall. There dwells Theoden, son of Thingol, king of the Mark of Rohan. We are come with the rising of the day. Now the road lies plain to see before us, but we must but we must ride more warily, for war is abroad, and the Rohirrim, the horse lords, do not sleep, even if it seems so f- so from afar. Draw no weapon, speak no haughty word, I counsel you all, until we are come before Theoden's seat. So, um, we get this glimpse, so basically Edoras, um, you know, sits in, um, in the region of Rohan, and we can... We can look here on our map of 
uh, of Middle Earth. Uh, where's a good one? Here we go. So we see here Rohan, and then Edoras is down, kind of to the south of where they are. So they're in, they're on, they were on the edge of Fangorn, right? And they rode, they're riding south toward Edoras, mm -hmm. and then here's the mountains they're referring to, um, and here's Edoras, right? So it's it's kind of on the the northern edge of these mountains right here. Okay. Um, and they're coming from where? Where are they coming? They're coming from north. They're coming from the north. So they basically had to go through a big part of Rohan to get there. Right. Yeah. They had to ride through a large region of Rohan okay. to get there. Um, and, and so, you know, this this stream they're referring to comes down from the mountains. And, mm -hmm. and Edoras is kind of at the foot. It's like in the foothills of the mountains. Okay. And okay. so it, it sits upon this green hill. Um, and Edoras is the city. Meduseld is the, or Meduseld, I'm not sure how you say that, but. Meduseld is upon, uh, is like the, the golden hall that's like the, the actual castle, if you will, Got it. of the city. Got it. Okay. Yeah. And that's where King Theoden That's where lives. King Theoden lives. Okay. Indeed. Indeed. But there's lots of other houses and, <clears throat> yeah. and it's a city. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So, um, uh, so they continue riding towards, uh, Towards Edoras, mm -hmm. and um, and it uh, as they get closer, they start to see all these small flowers that um, that spring up like countless stars amid the turf. At this, Gandalf says, "Look, how fair are the bright eyes in the grass. Evermind they are called, Simbelmine uh, in this land of men, for they blossom in all the seasons of the year and grow where dead men rest." Behold, we are come to the great barrows where the sires of Theoden sleep. Do you remember what a barrow is? Oh uh, yeah, it's like a, a valley, right? Like a mm -hmm. like a oh. No, they're like they're like burial mounds, right? Oh right. Yeah, I remember because remember the barrow white in um in the first oh yeah in yeah, fellowship yeah, 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 yeah. right yeah you know the barrow the barrows were like these burial mounds that the hobbits came to as they were leaving the old forest. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, and then they were like they were haunted, you know, with all these evil spirits, and right. they got captured by a barrel white, and Tom Bombadil had to come help them. That's right. right. Yes, yes. Now I remember. So, so barrow is this is like a mound. Yeah, it's a burial mound. And it is. It, it's not just a random mound. It's an actual burial mound. Right. You know, they they they'd actually like it's almost like they'd they'd create like this little house. You know, okay. for the dead, for like and I guess for like dead it? kings and dead ancestors and that kind oh, of okay. thing. Okay, so they didn't actually have like tombstones like we have. They just kind of had these mounds. That's yeah. That's the way I understand okay. it. Okay. Yeah. Um. So seven, he says, seven mounds upon the left and nine upon the right. Said Aragorn. Many long lives have been it is since the golden hall was built. So basically, it's saying there's like 16, 16 kings of the mark kings of Rohan okay. who are buried here. So there's been Got 16 it. kings of Rohan since Rohan was founded. And so... It's kind of a lot. It, it is. Um, but, you know, it's interesting to hear Legolas say, he says, 500 times have the red leaves fallen in Mirkwood in my home since then. So 500 years. Okay. It's 500 years old. And but a little while does that seem to us. Mm -hmm. So for Legolas, it's like, but that doesn't seem very long. So Rohan is me. 500 years. Right. Which would seem super long to like Aragorn. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Aragorn, not, Aragorn was not born when Rohan right. was founded. But not so long to Legolas. Right. Or even Gandalf. Right. Right. Okay. Um, Aragorn says, but to the riders of the bark, it seems so long ago that the, raise, that the raising of this house is but a memory of song, and the years before are lost in the mist of time. Now they call this land their home, their own, and their speech is sundered from their northern kin. Then he began to chant softly in a slow tongue unknown to the elf and dwarf, yet they listened, for there was a strong music in it. Um, and so, um, uh, Legolas says that I guess is the language of the Rohirrim for it is like to this land itself, rich and rolling in part and else hard and stern is the mountains, but I cannot guess what it means, save that it is laden with the sadness of mortal men. It runs thus in the common speech, said Aragorn, as near as I can make it. And so why don't you read, um, why don't you read this, this song here? Oh, okay. Where now the horse and the rider? Where is the horn that was blowing? Where is the helm and the hauberk and the bright hair flowing? Where is the hand on the harp string and the red fire glowing? Where is the spring and the harvest and the tall corn growing? 
They have passed like rain on the mountain, like a wind in the meadow. The days have gone down in the west, behind the hills into shadow. Who shall gather the smoke of the dead wood burning, or behold the flowing years from the sea returning? Yeah, beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful. Um, I don't know what like what what do you think is the what do you think is the feel what 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 do you think is the meaning or the feel of this little song here? Um, well, it's definitely um, you know, like lamenting, mm-hmm. and it's you know, kind of um, there's a bit of of regret I think in it, mm-hmm. and just kind of reminiscence and reflection. Yeah. Um. And it goes on to say that it was uh, recalling how tall and fair. It's it's about Aeoral. Aeoral? Is that how you say it? The oral, yeah. Aeoral, the yeah. young. Um, but, I mean, it is, it is, it is beautiful. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely, um, it's definitely a kind of a lament. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, uh, it's tone is, I would say, mournful. Yeah. Um, but there's, I mean, there's something very mystical about it as well. Um, yes. it's not, it's not like completely, um, I don't, it's not like completely despairing, but it's just like, it's noble. Like it, it just, mm-hmm. it, it, you know, ascribes a certain greatness and beauty to the, to the Kings that have passed, right. Absolutely. To these Kings of Rohan yeah. that have passed. I really yeah. like, um, it, you know, it, it asks, it, so it asks five questions in the first part. The first half of the poem asks five mm-hmm. questions. Where now the horse and the rider, where are the horn that was blowing, uh, where are the helm and the harbor harbor from the bright hair flowing hand on the harp string and the red fire glowing spring in the harvest and the tall corn growing mm-hmm. and it answers they have passed like rain on the mountain like a wind in the meadow the days have gone down in the west behind the hills into shadow um who shall gather the smoke of the dead wood burning or behold the flowing years from the sea returning i, I love i love that who shall gather the smoke of the dead wood burning yeah right? i was looking at that and it's like that's yeah it's like you were saying it's very mystical yeah I mean, yeah. that doesn't make any, you know, how can you gather smoke? But I think yeah. that's exactly the point because it's like, it's kind of like, um, you know, it's it's likening the greatness of these kings, of these kings of Rohan to the greatness of like a fire. Like they would, you know, their their greatness was like a fire burning intensely. Mm. But what's left of the fire after it burns intensely, right? It's smoke. smoke. And how can you regather the smoke? Right, you can't. You, know? you can't, yeah. Um, so, I mean, I, you know, reading this and just kind of, considering it i mean mm-hmm. i think this is one of tolkien's best poems mm. um at least that i've read um it's just it's that's masterful you mm-hmm. know that's the kind of thing that any poet would want to would say to himself i wish i'd written that so yeah yeah it's good stuff for sure <laughs> so nice job tolkien yeah good job way to go dude fist bump yeah mystical fist bump all right <laughs> um air five yeah um so um so you know moving moving ahead um after kind of this slow approach to Edoras, um viewing it from afar um considering the dead kings and the his- the brief history of rohan considering this beautiful song of its past kings which maybe encompasses you know maybe that song really encompasses best the spirit of this mm-hmm. people mm-hmm. this people of rohan yeah, they kind of live in a world where everyone lives longer than they do, but they're no less great than those people, hmm. right? Yeah. You know, like the elves, even the dwarves live longer than these men. These, these are not men like Aragorn where they, they're descended from Numenor and they live longer lives. These are men that live lives that are like the length of our lives. Okay. You know? Yeah. Um, so, um, so, yeah, it's, it's just a, it's a different perspective. You know, it's a different perspective on, on life. And its meaning than the elves would have, but now, um, now we enter in, now we enter, we we approach the the, the city walls, the gates of Edoras, and um, and they have to deal with a couple of different kind of guards. Right. Um, now it's a very so, well protected. Fortress. It is. It is. Um, so the first guard cries as they approach, cries out, "Stay, strangers here, unknown." Um, and uh, uh, Gandalf answers, well, I, well do I understand your speech, yet few strangers do so. Why then do you not speak in the common tongue as in the custom of, in the West, if you wish to be answered? So this guard of Rohan was actually speaking in the tongue of the Rohirrim, and Gandalf understood him, 
because Gandalf knows the tongue. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, uh, and so the, the writer, uh, one of the other guards replies, it is the wall, it is the will of Theoden King that none should enter his gate, save those who know our tongue and are, and are our friends. None are welcome here in days of war, but our own folk and those that come from Mundberg in the land of Gondor. Who are you that come heedless over the plain, thus strangely clad, riding horses like to our own horses? Long have we kept guard here, and we have watched you from afar. Never have we seen other riders so strange, nor any horse more proud than is one of these that bear you. He is one of the Mayaras, unless our eyes are cheated by some peril or some spell. Say, are you not a wizard, some spy from Saruman, or phantoms of his craft? Speak now and be swift. And then you read the next part. We are no phantoms, said Aragorn, nor do your eyes cheat you, for indeed these are your own horses that we ride, as you knew well ere you asked, I guess. But seldom does thief ride home to the stable. Here are Hasufel and the Arad, that Aomer, e Aomer, Aomer, the third marshal of the Mark, lent to us only two days ago. We bring them back now, even as we promised him. Has not Aomer then returned and given warning of our coming? A troubled look came into the guard's eyes. Of Aomer, I have naught to say, he answered. If what you tell me is truth, then doubtless Theoden will have heard of it. Maybe your coming was not wholly unlooked for. It is but two nights ago that Wormtongue came to us and said that by the will of Theoden, no stranger should pass these gates. Wormtongue, said Gandalf, looking sharply at the guard, say no more. My errand is not to Wormtongue, but to the lord of the mark himself. I am in haste. Will you not go or send to say that we are come? His eyes glinted under his deep brows as he bent his gaze upon the man. Yes, I will go, he answered slowly. But what name shall I report? And what shall I say of you? Old and weary you seem now, and yet you are fell and grim beneath, I deem. Well do you see and speak, said the wizard, for I am Gandalf. I have returned, and behold, I too bring back a horse. Here is Shadowfax the Great, whom no other hand can tame. And here beside me is Aragorn, son of Arathorn, the heir of kings, and it is to Munberg that he goes. Here also are Legolas the elf and Gimli the dwarf, our comrades. Go now and say to your master that we are at his gates and would have speech with him, if he will permit us to come into his hall. Strange names you give indeed, but I will report them as you bid and learn my master's will, said the guard. Wait here a little while, and I will bring you such answer as seems good to him. Do not hope too much. These are dark days. He went swiftly away, leaving the strangers in the watchful keeping of his comrades. After some time he returned. Follow me, he said. Theoden gives you leave to enter. But any weapon that you bear, be it only a staff, you must leave on the threshold. The door wardens will keep them. All right, so um, so we learn that they're not exactly welcome uh, here, that uh, Rohan considers itself to be at war at this point, and, um, and that some individual named Wormtongue is kind of giving orders on behalf of the king right mm -hmm. and um, and so Gandalf and company don't exactly feel welcome coming up to Rohan but they convince uh, they convince Theoden to let them uh, come see him in the hall yep but with the condition that they have to leave their weapons at the door right. before entering into the golden hall which seems fair I mean yeah I, yeah, I guess so um, especially in these type you know if, it, if things were normal that mm -hmm. would seem a little bit of overkill. But right. given what's been going on, mm -hmm. it seems reasonable. It seems reasonable to you, but at the same time, it's, uh, you know, Gandalf is a little taken aback by it because he's like, he he knows Theoden, and he and Theoden have a history. Yeah, and, true. Um, and so, you know, he he's more of the mindset of, why why does why isn't Theoden trusting me? Mm. You know? Yeah, why is it? Yeah, so maybe he's a little suspicious. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so they approach, uh, they walk up to um, Medusild, up to the Golden Hall, and um, and there they're greeted by another guard, uh, who is the door warden, and his name is Hama. Um, Hama is my name. Here I must bid you lay aside your weapons before you enter. Um, Legolas gives his knife, his quiver, and his bow, um, saying and you know this is kind of an inter there's lots of little entertaining stuff that goes on in this little particular scene yes there is yeah. um he says keep these well for they come from the golden wood and the lady of lothlorien gave them to me uh and then it's that it says wonder came into the man's eyes and he laid the weapons hastily by the wall as if he feared to handle them 
uh, no man will touch them, I promise you, he said. So, it, you know, like every chapter we go on in the land of Rohan, it just becomes clearer and clearer that, like, for whatever reason, the people of Rohan think Galadriel is some kind of, like, evil witch. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, they're definitely not... They, they know of her. They're not fans. Yeah, but they don't but they don't really know her. Like, they know of her. Right. But everything they know of her seems to be, like, evil. Like, seem, almost seems like it. it's, like, somebody with malice towards Galadriel has been trying to influence them, you know, to, to think a certain way about her, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's um, true. You know, they're, they're, they're not, they don't know of her, herself. All they know is what other people have told, other people them. Have told them about her, right? Yeah. right. And, and I'm sure there's just some suspicion in there just some kind of like superstition in there as well you Mm -hmm. know because these are not elves you know right yeah they they, they are you know they're far more limited in kind of their in their outlook their you know their lives are their lives are shorter their perspective on things is just is just different right yeah their perspective on the world of elves and like that kind of world around them is different you know yeah that makes Um, they're simple they're simpler in a way you know right and they don't have the yeah they don't have the history they don't have the experience right to go off of it's all been hearsay yeah exactly exactly so so legolas is you know he he doesn't put up a fight about giving up his weapons but aragorn uh is not so willing he says it is not my will to put aside my sword or to deliver Anduril to the hands to the hand of any other man hama says it is the will of theoden Aragorn responds, it is, uh, I'm sorry, Hama says, it is not clear to me that the will of, uh, oh, who is this that's speaking? Um, Aragorn. It is not clear to me that the will of Theoden, son of Thingol, even though he be lord of the mark, should prevail over the will of Aragorn, son of Arathorn, Elendil's heir of Gondor. Uh, Hama says, this is the house of Theoden, not of Aragorn, even were he king of Gondor in the seat of Denethor. Uh, his sword was now in his hand and the point uh, towards the strangers. Now Gandalf intervenes here because it's look you know things are starting to escalate mm-hmm. uh, and says this is idle talk needless is Theoden's demand but it is useless to refuse a king will have his way in his own hall be it folly or wisdom good good little proverb there mm-hmm. a king will have his way in his own hall be it folly or wisdom mm-hmm. Aragorn says truly and I would do as the master of the house bade me were this only a woodman's cot if I bore now any sword but Anduril Hama says look dude I don't care what the name of the sword is <laughs> you're gonna put it here. Or you're not going in. Um, yeah, and he says, Here you shall lay it if you would not fight alone against all the men in Edoras. Gimli, of course, has to step in yeah. at this point and he's like, say, uh, Not alone. Yeah. Because I got my axe. He's, he's like, and I got uh, a hot temper. Check this bad boy out. You're gonna be you're gonna be tasting it soon if you mess with my boy, Aragorn. Right. Yeah. right. Gimli's got his back. Oh yeah. Gandalf's still trying to defuse it. Come, come, we are all friends here, or should be, for the laughter of Mordor will be our only reward if we quarrel. My my errand is pressing. Here at last, at least, is my sword, good Menhama. Keep it, uh, keep it well. Glamdring it is called, for the elves made it long ago. Now let me pass. Come, Aragorn. Uh, and and I, I love this little scene. Slowly, Aragorn unbuckled his belt and himself set his sword upright against the wall. Here I set it, he said, but I command you not to touch it, nor to permit any other to lay hand on it. In this elvish sheath dwells the blade that was broken and has been made again. Tell Carr first wrought it in the deeps of time. Death shall come to any man that draws Elendil's sword, save Elendil's heir. So in other words, Aragorn says, Meh. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Don't touch. That's right. My sword. Hands off. Don't touch the sword or I will kill you. Okay. Right. Yeah. And it seems to work because the guard is all like. Yeah, I don't know. I mean. Whoa. You know, I get it, but. It shall be, Lord, as you command. I don't know. I mean, like, what do you think? Do you think Aragorn is being a little childish here, or do you think do you think he's just being, you know, being the rightful king? Um, I don't think he's being childish mm-hmm. at all. Um, I think he feels like he's. I think he feels maybe um, unjustly. He kind of like the same way Gandalf does, right? Mm-hmm. Like. Look, dude, you have any idea what I've been through to get here? Right. right? Do you not know who I am? Mm-hmm. Like, really? You know, I don't know who you think you are, but you don't have any right to boss me around. Yeah. And I think he's justified in that, mm-hmm. you know? Um, I, I was very, oh, I will say I was very impressed with the door warden's um, responses. To yeah. Him. Like, he was very, like, 
you know, matter of fact, very businesslike, very professional. Uh-huh. He didn't let himself get wound up and whatever. Yeah. Um, but it, it actually reminds me. Um, so, uh, so I I went to for college. You, you know this, Greta. For college, I went to the Naval Academy um, in Annapolis. Oh, that's right. Yes. And, uh, yeah, you were, you were aware of that. Speaking of which, yeah. beat Army. Oh yeah, beat Army. Uh, today is the Army Navy football game. Anyway, um, so and, and you know, being a military institution, we had we actually had um, guards posted at our different gates. Right. The gates to get on to um, to the academy grounds, and um, uh, what you know, so and those gates were manned by Marines. They were usually manned by like you know, like young newly enlisted Marines. And um, so these, you know, these were these guys were like low down the military totem pole, like low down the rank. But every once in a while, you would hear a story about you know a marine, um, and, but they were supposed to check. They're supposed to check every person that comes onto the academy grounds, like get an ID and like make sure that they're legitimately coming onto the academy grounds. Even people they recognize, even people they know, and um, uh, and so I, I remember hearing stories one time, uh, it's it, it, several times about. A um, like you know the admiral who was in charge of the academy or something like that like coming back onto mm. the school grounds and everybody know you know everybody knows who the admiral you can, you can see he's got you know you can see his rank right. insignia even if you even if he's wearing civilian clothes you know who he is and um, and you know every once in a while you'd hear about a marine a young marine just like you know almost like shaking in his boots because this is like an admiral a, a you know a, right. a flag rank it's like his boss of the boss of the boss yeah the boss. Yeah, yeah this is like you know in, in the military scheme that you know you're a little peon and this is like the king right right, right. and here you are saying sir i need just i need to see your you know proof of who you are right not and, and he's doing it because it's his duty because it's it's his job to do that and he does not he is he does not have leave to permit anyone, no matter who they are, right, to, to just go without showing proof of who they are, right? Mm-hmm. So it, it, for the non-military, that would seem like an extreme sort of mindset. But in the, in the scheme of the military, in the scheme of doing your duty, it's kind of, it's kind of beautiful to see that happen. It, mm. it, it's really like, um, and, and, and what happens here with Hama, the door warden, reminds me of that, right? Yeah, like, oh, yeah I can see that. That, he's, that he's, just, he's just like, he's holding the line. He's like, He's like, look, I don't care. I don't care that you're Gandalf, this great wizard. I don't care that um, you're the king of kings. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm doing my job. Right. I have my orders. Mm-hmm. I obey mm-hmm. Theoden. Mm-hmm. I'm doing my job. Right. So yeah, I think ultimately, it's, who does he have to answer to? He has to answer to Theoden. Right. right? And, and and he and it's almost like he kind of considered it, even this little thing, to consider this his sacred duty. Yep. You know. Mm-hmm. And it, to do it. With, with you know to do his best at it exactly you know? exactly yeah though of course as we come to find he, yes <laughs> he kinda, having said <laughs> all that was nice, funny. having said all that uh, nice stuff about hama uh he he falls for he falls for Gandalf. Gandalf plays a little jedi mind yeah trick on him. yeah um uh he he says you know so um both Gimli and Aragorn lay, us, lay aside their weapons finally and Gandalf uh Gandalf's had laid aside his sword, but um, Hama's like, I need your staff too. Um, uh, he says, forgive me, but that too must be left at the door, at the doors. Foolishness, said Gandalf. Prudence is one thing, but discourtesy is another. I'm, I'm old. I'm just an old man. If I may not lean <laughs> on my stick as I go, then I will sit out here until it pleases Theoden to hobble out himself to speak with me. Um, Aragorn laughed. Every man has something too dear to trust to another. But would you pardon old man from his support? Come, will you not let us enter? Uh, Hama, ha, Hama, I think Hama kind of knows he's making a mistake here. Yeah, I think he does, just based uh, on what he says next. He says, The staff in the hand of a wizard may be more than a prop for age. Uh, he looked hard at the ash staff on which Gandalf leaned. Yet in doubt, a man of worth will trust to his own wisdom. I believe your friends and folk worthy of honor, who have no evil purpose. You may go in. Um, so, tricksy on Gandalf's part. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I do kind of wonder if he wasn't just doing like playing some kind of subtle you know using some kind of subtle magic on on Hama here but you know it doesn't say yeah. anything about him doing that um so they make their way in Gandalf with his staff you know to be honest Hama probably was just tired of fighting he probably was he's was... <laughs> he was like whatever okay fine i got i got the really sharp things yeah <laughs> all right yeah but but to it to be fair also 
um, you know, it's like in, in doubt, a man has to trust to his own wisdom, right? And mm-hmm. when, when, you, when you're faced with a difficult situation, you have to trust to your own, to what you know, to the wisdom you know, right? And wisdom is like, what is wisdom? I mean, wisdom is, wisdom is knowledge, not, it's not like a, it's not like a necessarily a logical, um, like go like playing by the rule book. Mm-hmm. It's wisdom is when you don't have rules, it's right. what you fall back on. It's more like instinct. It's right. Uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's like, kind of like, well, it's, it's kind of like a learned instinct. instinct. It's yeah. light, lightened learned instinct. Yeah. 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 And so, you know, Hama, it turns out makes a mistake. Um, but it, you know, it's a, it, in, in the end, fortunately it doesn't hurt him too much. Right. Um, so, um, so they enter into the hall and, um, and the description they get of Theoden is this, or we get of Theoden is this. At the far end of the house, beyond the hearth and facing north towards the doors, was a dais with three steps. And in the middle of the dais was a great gilded chair. Upon it sat a man so bent with age that he seemed almost a dwarf. But his white hair was long and thick and fell in great braids from beneath a thin golden circlet set upon his brow. In the center upon his forehead shone a single white diamond. His beard was laid like snow upon his knees, but his eyes still burned with a bright light, glinting as he gazed at the strangers. Behind his chair stood a woman clad in white. At his feet, upon the steps, sat a wizened figure of a man with a pale, wise face and heavy lidded eyes. So, you know, how would you how would you reiterate that description of Theoden? Um, reiterate? You mean, uh, you mean, um... Yeah, just, like... Like, what, how would I interpret how, how it? Does, how does, based on that description, how does Theoden... He seems very you? feeble. Yeah. Like, very, like, just weak and bent and, like, almost just a figurehead, not an actual king. Yeah. He seems like this, you know, haggard old man mm-hmm. who, um, you know, is it, is, is, is on his last... You know, is in his last days. Yeah. You know. Yeah. He doesn't really seem capable of commanding, you know, an army or anything like right. that. Right. Definitely. Yeah. Um. Uh, he says, "I greet you, and maybe you look for welcome, but truth to tell, your welcome is doubtful here, Master Gandalf. You have ever been a herald of woe. Troubles follow you like crows, and ever the oftener the worse. I will not deceive you. When I heard that Shadowfax had come back riderless." I rejoiced at the return of the horse, but still more at the lack of the rider. Harsh words. Mm-hmm. And when Eomer brought the tidings that you had gone at last to your long home, I did not mourn. But news from afar is seldom soothed. Here you come again, and with you come evils worse than before, as might be expected. Why should I welcome you, Gandalf Stormcrow? Tell me that. Slowly he sat down again in his chair. Um, so, Theoden looks at Gandalf and he basically says you know I I was glad to see Shadowfax come back without you you know mm-hmm. why are you showing up here now mm-hmm. I prefer you weren't yeah um at that we hear from the pale man sitting upon the steps uh, next to Theoden you speak justly lord it is not yet five days since the bitter tidings came that Theodred your son was slain upon the west marches your right hand, second marshal of the mark, and Aomer, there is little trust. Few men would be left to guard your walls if he had been allowed to rule. And even now we learn from Gondor that the Dark Lord is stirring in the east. Such is the hour in which the wanderer chooses to return. Why indeed should we welcome you, Master Stormcrow? Last spell I name you, ill news. And ill news is an ill guess, they say. He laughed grimly as he lifted his heavy lids for a moment and gazed on the strangers with dark eyes. So not only do you have Theoden uh, giving Gandalf a hard time, but you have this worm tongue, right? Mm-hmm. This, uh, what a horrible name. Yeah, um, this pale man. Is so, that his real name? Uh, no, his real name is Grima. Oh, that's right. That's right. So who, where did he get the name Worm Tongue? Is that what Gandalf? Calls I think him? I think that's what I think that's the name Gandalf gives him. He says, okay. "You are held wise, my friend Worm Tongue, and are doubtless a great support to your master. Yet in two ways may a man come with evil tidings. He may be a worker of evil, or he may be such as leaves well alone." And comes only to bring aid in time of need. Um, so Gandalf tries to make the point of like, I'm not bringing you bad news for the mm-hmm. sake of bringing you bad news. I'm bringing you bad news as a friend coming to bring aid. Right. Um, and we also find out that Theodred, who was uh, Theoden's son, is dead now. Right. 
has died recently. Yeah. So, so was he, but that's not, so was that part of the orc battle that we read about? No. No. Okay. No, that was, a Eomer was the leader, leader oh, of that right, party. Oh, right, 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 right. He's, okay. he's Theoden's um, nephew. He's Theoden's okay. nephew. Okay. Or I think they said. So this was a separate battle that his son was killed in? Or what? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Separate, uh, separate engagement. Um, and to Gandalf, Wormtongue replies, there is a third kind of person bringing ill news. Pickers of bones, meddlers and other men's sorrows, carry on fowl that grow fat on war. What aid have you ever brought, Stormcrow? And what aid did you bring now? It was aid from us that you sought last time that you were here. Then my lord bade you choose any horse that you would and be gone, and to the wonder of all you took Shadowfax in your insolence. My lord was sorely grieved, Yet to some it seemed that to speed you from the land the price was not too great. I guess that it is likely to turn out the same once more. You will seek aid rather than render it. Do you bring men? Do you bring horses, swords, spears? Then I would call aid. That is our present need. But who are these that follow at your tail? Three ragged wanderers in gray, and you yourself the most beggar-like of the four. And, and you know, uh, to be sure, um, Wormtongue... Wormtongue has a way with words, and he has a certain point. Um, not to say that in the end it, we, you know, w we discover more about the story, but as far as kind of like playing, you know, kind of the political game, mm -hmm. Wormtongue mm -hmm. seems to be pretty he's, adept he, at it. Absolutely, you know. Yeah, he's, you know, he, he's, he kind of matches Gandalf's Gandalf's good point, which is that there's mm -hmm. two types of people that can bring good news, and he said, yeah, there's a third too, someone who just wants to kind of come and pick at the bones, right? right. Where is the help that you want to bring us? Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you know, four people is not really going to do the job, right? You know? He has a point. Yeah. He does have a point. Um, so whatever he's up to, he's doing a pretty masterful job of mm -hmm. it. Um, Gandalf to that replies, you know, you know, Theoden, he, he turns to Theoden instead and he says, you know, your house is not very, is not as courteous as it once was. Um, he, he gives an explanation for why they're all clad in gray. Mm -hmm. Um, of course that doesn't help, uh, that doesn't help things, uh, Right, Wormtongue because says, we know how they feel yeah, about the elves. Right, then it is true, as Aramir reported, that you are in league with the sorceress of the Golden Wood. It makes you wonder if Wormtongue is the one that was sp spreading all the lies and yeah. mistrust about yeah. Gladriel. It definitely maybe looks that way. It is not to be wondered at. Webs of deceit were ev were ever woven in, in Dwimordine. Where is Dwimordine? Uh, I, I, think that's, I think that's their word for Lorien. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, so with that... The sorceress of the oh, golden wood. Oh man! Uh oh, Gimli is like, get, you know, Gimli just got up and he's looking. For, he, he's ready to, you know, without his axe, even he's probably just ready to jump on Wormtongue and like bite I him or something I love that like relationship that. that Tolkien plays up between yeah. Gimli and, and Galadriel. I just love yeah. it. Yeah, it's a very unlikely pairing, you know. But yeah, he's he's just he's so loyal and committed mm -hmm. to her. Yeah, well, that's why I mean, Gimli is like, Gimli is such a great character. I yeah. mean. You know, he's he's got to be one of the best that that Tolkien came up with, and um, just, you know, just because he's uh, he he's got a he's got a humorous bit, but he's just he's such a he's such a brawler. Yeah. You know. He, he just he's always looking for a fight, but he's a good guy. Right. You know, he's he's looking for a just fight. You know. Yep. He's like, just give me a reason, just give me one little reason, to just haul off and smack you and throw you down to the ground and, right. and beat the you know what out of you you know it's like but he just, won't do it for just anyone he, I mean, or, it's got to be for one of his but he you know, but his but his posse. thing is always just like give me a reason yeah. now he's not an orc he's not someone who's just going to go attack right, you for right, no right, reason right 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 but but at but the he same doesn't time need much. he's a brawler he's just yeah. like he's just like give me a reason i he's will like always ready to go he's like son <laughs> i will i will ruin your day yeah give me if you just give me one, one reason one reason yeah yeah won't take much but Gandalf is able to hold him back, and Gandalf at that uh, says this. In Dwimordine, in Lorien, seldom have walked the feet of men. Few mortal eyes have seen the light that lies there ever, long and bright. Galadriel, Galadriel, clear is the water of your well. White is the star in your white hand, unmarred, unstained as leaf and land. In Dwimordine, in Lorien, more fair than thoughts of mortal men. Um, Gandalf sings this song. And and then some for some reason that song I don't know if those are if if that's some kind of spell or magic words but at that he casts aside his tattered cloak stands up and leaned no longer on his staff and he spoke in a clear cold voice. Well, it's almost like he was channel like 
Yeah. It was almost like a prayer. Yeah. Right? Like yeah. he was summoning Galadriel. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it does seem like that. The wise speak only of what they know the wise speak only of what they know, Grima, son of Galmod. A witless worm have you become. Therefore be silent, and keep your forked tongue beneath your behind your teeth. I have not passed through fire and death to bandy crooked words with a serving man till the lightning falls. He raised his staff. There was a roll of thunder. The sunlight was blotted out from the eastern windows. The whole hall became suddenly dark as night. The fire faded to sullen embers. Only Gandalf could be seen, standing white and tall, before the blackened hearth. In the gloom they heard the hiss of Wormtongue's voice. Did I not tell you, counsel? Did I not... I'm sorry. Did I not counsel you, lord, to forbid his staff? That fool Hama has betrayed us. There was a flash as if lightning had cloven the roof. Then all was silent. Wormtongue sprawled on his face. So Gandalf suddenly shows himself. Yep. Hama made a mistake by letting him have his staff. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, Gandalf shows himself to well, be... Well, a mistake as far as Wormtongue's concerned. Yeah. Yeah. But that not... was a, It was a fortunate mistake, but... Yeah. Um, it was a providential mistake, but right. it was still a mistake on, on right. given, given, given Hama's orders. Yeah. 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 Um, so, you know, effectively, um, Gandalf has forced Wormtongue out of the equation. Yes. Right? Uh, Gandalf has kind of shown who he truly is. And he says, Now, Theoden, son of Thingol, will you hearken to me? Do you ask for help? He lifted his staff and pointed to a high window. Uh, the darkness seems to clear in the sky. And he says to, he finally says to Theoden, Too long have you sat in shadows and trusted in twisted tales and crooked promptings. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting just to refer to the Jackson movies on this. Um, Jackson adds a layer to this that I'm not sure Tolkien intended. And when we, when we get to the point where we watch the movie, and we can go back and we'll talk about this more, but in the film... Um, it's almost like Theoden's possessed. It's almost like the, like an evil spirit is possessing Theoden. Mm -hmm. um, because there's like this when this when this moment happens, it's like Gandalf like knocks this evil spirit out of out of uh, Theoden. I think it's actually Saruman who who is implied that's possessing uh, him. Oh, interesting. But that doesn't really seem to be what's going on in the book. There doesn't seem to be an evil spirit like another being possessing him. It just seems like Theoden has allowed himself to be influenced by this kind of defeatist mindset. You know, yeah. Like worm tongue has had too much influence on him. Yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't. I think evil spirit is probably taking a little too far. Yeah. But I definitely think that worm tongue was being like a toxic influence. Oh yeah. I, I think... mean, you could tell he just he, like the way he was described at the beginning of the chapter, like the way Theoden was described. Like he looked, he looked old and sick and feeble. Yeah. You know, and then all of a sudden, once worm tongue's gone, he's like. Oh, like it's all, and he even tells Gandalf he's like I've been reawakened. Yeah. So it's almost like Wormtongue had him in like this, this like trance, mm -hmm. you know, and it was just kind of like almost like a leech, like just sucking. Yeah. Like well, energy it, and it it, 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 you make a good point. I mean, excuse me. Um, words themselves have the power to affect our spirits you know like oh, absolutely have the power to uh, especially like constant exposure to those words and mm -hmm. no uh, and like if you're just constantly being fed negative stuff about yourself uh, and, and and not positive stuff or not not, not mm -hmm. kind of fighting back against it um you know this i mean it's something we talk about sometimes yeah um like if if you just or if you're listening to all the negative stuff um and allowing yourself to listen to it and not mm -hmm. not fight against it, mm -hmm. um, then what happens to Theoden will happen to you. You know, you'll you'll become this kind of mess, this shadow of yourself. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Of your true self, and that's what's happened to Theoden. Yep. Right. It's not that he's possessed by some evil spirit. It's just that his own spirit has been sickened by this toxic influence. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. You know the 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 inner being of who he is has been has been harmed. He allowed himself to be harmed by right. by worm tongue. That's why it's so important to just really be aware. Just you know, practically speaking in life, be aware of those kind of people you're surrounding yourself with. Yeah. They're not people that are building you up and encouraging you and making you helping you be the person that you you know that God wants you to be. You have no business being around uh -huh. those people. You know. Yeah. I mean, not to say that God doesn't bring 
difficult people into our lives for particular reasons, you know, to strengthen us in certain ways. But continually exposing ourselves to those toxic influences is can have detrimental consequences. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, excuse me, I'm kind of getting over a cold. Um, You've said that like the last four episodes I know, now. I know. Well, it's been a weird, <laughs> it's been a weird cold. Now I'm getting a little congested, but... Uh, you're doing great. Okay, thank you. Good. Keep, keep powering through. So, so Worm Tongue seems to be, you know, thrown down here from his position of influence by Gandalf. Um, uh, and here we find a reference to Eowyn, who's the, the woman, the young woman that's been standing by Theoden's, right. uh, Theoden's throne. Uh, to, to Eowyn, Gandalf says, go, Eowyn, sister, uh, no, I'm sorry, Theoden says, go, Eowyn, sister, daughter. The time for fear is past. What is a sister daughter? That's a niece. Sister. My oh, sister. Oh, like my sister's daughter. My sister's daughter. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Remember, Aramir and Eowyn are um, brother and sister, so they have the same mother, who's Eowyn's sister. Got it. Okay. So, Eomer is sister son. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Um. The. Uh, and, and you know, you know what that you know what that is. What? It's a kenning. It's a, the part of speech, the or the oh. literary device is a kinning. Um, a kinning. So it was like it's a very like old school like uh, like ancient way of speaking before, you know. So a lot of the words that we have for things now were mm-hmm. originally like combinations of different more concrete concepts. So. So like uncle would be like mother brother. Yeah. If it was your uncle on your mother's side. Right. Okay. Um, a uh, once upon a time like. Um, this, somebody might have referred to the sun before they had the word sun. They might have referred to it as the sky candle, right? Oh, okay. Okay, it's um, like a description of... Right, it's like taking two words that mm-hmm. refer to different, you know, two different things, combining them to form a new concept, right? Gotcha, okay. Now, sometimes those become an, one word, an actual word themselves. They kind of get combined. Mm. Um, but uh, but anyway, that's what, that's what it is, you know, sister or daughter. Very cool, okay. I like it. Um, so at this, why don't you read that? The woman turned. Read that paragraph. So this is speaking, speaking of Eowyn. Yeah. The woman turned and went slowly into the house. As she passed the door, she turned and looked back. Grave and thoughtful was her glance as she looked on the king with cool pity in her eyes. Very fair was her face, and her long hair was like a river of gold. Slender and tall she was in her white robe, girt with silver. But strong she seemed, and stern as steel, a daughter of kings. Thus Aragorn, for the first time, in the full light of day, beheld Eowyn, Lady of Rohan, and thought her fair, fair and cold, like a morning of pale spring that is not yet come to womanhood. And she now was suddenly aware of him, tall heir of kings, wise with many winters, gray-cloaked, hiding a power that she felt, that yet she felt. For a moment still as stone she stood, then turning swiftly she was gone. Yeah, I just, uh, I like that little, you know, we'll see a lot more from Eowyn later on, but, um, but I like that just little description of Eowyn and, and then also mm-hmm. the little thing about the connection, the connection between her yeah. and Arwen. Yeah. Um, I was confused at first though, cause I was getting her confused with Arwen and I was like, wait a second, Arwen's an elf. Why is she in Rohan? And then yeah. I was like, oh no, Eowyn. No, right. Arwen. Eowyn. Um, but she's a beauty, I mean, you know, she, she would seem to be a beauty all herself. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, it says grave and thoughtful was her glance as she looked on the king with cool pity in her eyes. Uh, very fair was her face and her long hair was like a river of gold. It's interesting to think about, you know, given that connection between, you know, um, her and Aragorn here, um, you know, how different she is in physical appearance from, uh, from Arwen, right? Arwen is... Arwen's kind of like the spinning image of Luthien, dark mm-hmm. hair. Um, you know, uh, and, and maybe that's just the one thing is like the dark hair, and then you got the golden hair with Eowyn, right? So anyway, it's just it's interesting to think about that as these two women who are who Aragorn. Um, you know, it, we're, we're gonna find later Aragorn is kind of I don't know if he's torn between them, but you know. There's definitely something about both of them that, you know, he's uh, he's attracted to, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so that's a little bit about Eowyn. Um, and then 
last bit for this uh, for this part of the chapter. Um, we finally hear Theoden admit, "Dark have been my dreams of late, um, but I feel as one new awakened. I would I would now that you had come before Gandalf, for I fear that already you have come too late, only to see the last days of my house. Not long now shall stand the high hall which Brego, son of Eorl, built. Fire shall devour the high seat." What is to be done? Much, said Gandalf, but first send for Eomer. Do I not guess rightly that you hold him prisoner by the council of Grima, of him that all save you name save you name the worm tongue? It is true, said Theoden. He had rebelled against my commands and threatened death to Grima in my hall. A man may love you and yet not love worm tongue or his council, said Gandalf. That may be. I will do as you ask. Call Hama to me. Since he proved untrusty as a doorward, let him become an errand runner. The guilty shall bring the guilty to judgment, said Theoden. And his voice was grim, yet he looked at Gandalf and smiled, and as he did so, many lines of care were smoothed away and did not return. Um, so, Theoden is now awakened. Yep. You know, whatever, mm-hmm. whatever was holding him back, he now realizes that um, he needs to rise up and, and be the king that he's yes. called to be. Yeah. Gandalf was... You know, a sort of savior. Yeah. In this instance. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, any more thoughts on... No, um, that was a good. I like... I enjoyed this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So far, I'm enjoying the chapter. Very yeah. Much. Um, well, yeah, next time we'll, we'll, we'll finish off um, the King of the Golden Hall. King of the Golden Hall. Um, and uh, now we're going to do some haiku. We're going to sing? Yeah. Do it. You going first? Yeah. All right. You can go first if you want. You want to go first? Sure, I'll go first. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen syllables in high two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen syllables in high two. Yeah. Huh. Just had to let the fade out. That's right. Fade out completely. All right. You first or me? Uh, rock, paper, scissors. All right. All right. Rock, rock paper, paper, scissors, scissors shoot. shoot. Rock, rock paper, paper, scissors, scissors shoot. shoot. <laughs> rock, <laughs> paper, scissors, shoot. I win! Oh, man. I win, I win, I win. You won. I let you win. Oh, yeah, whatever. There's no letting people win in rock, paper, scissors. All right. It's all strategy. What you got? All right. No, I want. Uh, okay. Yes, I'll go first. Oh wait. No, it, uh, it's, yeah. It's up no, to you. No, you're right. I wanna. I wanna go first. Um. Here it is. To the golden hall, an alliance to make, but first, down with worm tongue. Nice. Yeah. Sit down, loser. Right. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good. Yeah. I like it. Did you have any more or just that one? No, I just had that one. Okay. How about you? Here we go. From under a cloud of cold despair, the storm crow comes, herald of hope. Yeah, I was wondering, actually, I meant to ask you about that. Mm Mm-hmm. Why does, why does Warm Tongue call him storm crow? Well, I think it's it's meant it's meant to be an insult. It's like I think it's the the crow that comes at the beginning of a storm, you know, that like um, it's kind of like sitting there, you know, like you know, making a bunch of noise oh, about a storm coming. Oh, okay. okay. But he's not really doing anything but doing that. But just you know, it's, it's, just making a it's lot like of noise. You know, doing, you okay. know, a storm is coming. Okay. Yeah. You, you you know you already know a storm is coming, and here's this crow that's just like wow. You know, like like the the storm is coming. And it's like thank you, Captain Obvious. You right. Know, like, why do you have to, all you're doing <laughs> right. is just Are you doing... reminding me of this. Right. Yeah. 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 Um. So maybe it's a way of saying like Captain Obvious. You know, okay. that's what we'd say is Captain Obvious. Thank you, Captain Obvious. Right. I know that. Um, now what but, are we gonna do about it? But I thought it was kind of a cool name. Um. Anyway, you know, I was like Gandalf Stormcrow. I was like, I could see that being a name that you wear as a badge of honor. Um. You think so? I don't know. If all you're doing is like crowing and calling well, and not it, doing it, anything, it's kind of like if help. somebody insults you, and you but you turn out to be better than that insult. Mm. Um, you know, you kind of wear that. You might, you might, you might turn out to wear that as a badge of honor and like, kind of like take that insult for your own. Yesterday, yeah. Um, 
Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, Turn the other t- cheek and ride the high horse. That's right. Yep. That's right. Um, all right. We'll go with Rob, the man, the myth, the legend, Fang Man. All right. Um, Rob in the house. Do, you want to do this one? Yeah, sure. Bathed in rising sun, the golden roof and golden posts, the house of Errol's folk. Nice. Nice. Sounds like a place I want to go to there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sounds pretty nice. It does sound very nice. Um, sounds like kind of a beautiful little outpost there. It does, yeah. Nicely done, Rob. Kind of like a beacon of light in the darkness. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a safe haven from the storm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, next we got Aaron. Uh, Aaron the Reason. Yeah. Teasing. Yep. All right. We got two from him. Yeah. Awesome. Courts of Edoras. Medusel, the Golden Hall. Theoden waits there. Nice. I like it. I do too. I do too. And he's, uh, you got this next one. All right. Second one from Aaron. A king bent with age, an old wizard with a staff, and a witless worm. I love that. I love that he used that. I love witless worm. Yeah. That's going to be like my new insult. Yeah. To people I don't like. like, you're a witless worm. Leave me And they're going to be like, yeah, I am a witless worm, so what? (laughs) They're going to wear it like a badge of honor. That's right. I'm also a storm crow. That's right. What do you want to do about it? That's right. Um, Storm crow sounds like it could be like a... Like a superhero name. It does. I was just thinking the same thing, actually. You know? Yeah. Witless Worm, not so much. Yeah, Witless Worm, not so much. I am the Witless Worm. <laughs> okay. Um, Although Ant-Man, I didn't think Ant-Man sounded cool until I saw the movie. So yeah. So maybe. If Marvel come, can come up with a... If anybody can do it, Marvel can do it. Yeah. If any can make a work, Witless Worm well, a superhero. Well, if Witless Worm was a superhero, he'd have to be funny in some way. That's yeah, absolutely. Thing. That's why Ant, That's why Ant-Man is so great, because he's yeah. hilarious. Yeah. But if he was just like, oh, I'm an ant and I'm really strong. Like, that would I'm be lame. I'm Ant-Man. I'm as powerful as an ant. You're like, what? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. See, that's yeah. why I didn't even want to like, I was like, whatever. It's not worth my time. Yeah, no, I hear you. But yeah, you're right. He would have to be like, like, really funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. All right. Mary Grace. Mary. The Mary Grace. The. The Mary the Grace. The Mary Grace. Yes. All right. Um, you want to read this? Sure. Hope not for admittance. Dark days we live in, yet White Rider brings light. Uh, Very nice. As good always. Stuff. Good stuff. As always. Yep. But she's got a longer one. We'll come back to that one after we get okay. through the rest of the haiku. Okay. All right. Greg, the University of Kentucky, UK. Uh, he says, words, twisted as sinew, deep as mountain roots, Edoras lays befouled. Befouled. Yes. It's a great word. It is a great word. Didn't he, leave, he it up, reference... leave, leave it up to those British people that come up to use all the, the fancy... I thought he was from Kentucky. The fancy words. Well, he is, but he lives in he lives in the United Kingdom now. Oh, okay. It's very confusing, I know. That is really confusing. Yeah, he, he lives in Kentucky, or he lived in Kentucky, went to the University of Kentucky. And that's no. why he goes by Greg UK. Now he lives in the United Kingdom. Uh, yeah. I wonder if he can get UK basketball games over there. I don't know. He has to pay a lot of money, probably. I don't think yeah. British people watch basketball. I think he's pretty good friends with John Calipari, so probably not too hard. Yeah, he probably gets yeah. like a special special deal. Right on. Um, yeah, it's good. Befouled. <laughs> he's, probably just probably, he's probably just like, what in the world are they talking about? <laughs> um, all right, let's see. Uh, okay. What are you doing? I, I, I thought I had, there was another one. There was. Oh. I had to take care of something real quick. All right. Oh, okay. Um. That's no. That's that's all from Greg on this awesome. one. Uh, then we have Josh. It. All right, super fan. Super Josh fan. Josh Skywalker. Josh. Uh, take thee, Herogrim, chief of Aeoral. Renew thyself. Mark him the oath. Nice. That's really good. That's really good. Josh always knows like the special names that we're not aware of, like Herogrim. I, I think that refers to Theoden. Um. Mm. Uh. You know the the renew thyself. Um, renew thyself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mark him the oath. What is the oath? It's capitalized. Um, you know, I think we'll get to that actually in the next part of the chapter. But oh, I, I think I think okay. the oath may refer to the um, uh, to the oath to come to the aid of Gondor. 
Oh, um, got it. Okay. Yeah, when they're in need, they have like kind of this alliance. So I think okay. I'm not sure if that comes at the end of this chapter, or if there's if that's later on. Okay. Um, but I think that's what he's referring to. Um, you want to do the next one? Um, is this one for this this part of the chapter? Uh, you know what? We can wait on that. We'll wait on that one until next time. Yeah, we'll hold off on that one. Okay. That's why I got to be specific on which part of the chapter it's for. Yes. But don't worry, Josh. We'll get to it. Absolutely. We we'll promise. get to it. We shall, we shall get to it. And if you want to submit another one for our next episode, go for it. Mm hmm. Because you're obviously a master at this. So, yeah. The more the better. Amen. Haiku. Amen. All right. Um,. You want to read the oh, Mary, yes. uh, the Mary Grace's longer poem here? I would be honored. Legolas, what do your elf eyes see? I see green valleys and bold blonde riders who ride like the wind and in their eyes is fire. A stream trickles down from the mountain of snow, a golden palace. It is there we must go. Legolas, what do your elf eyes see? I see smoke rising from battles afar, which black like the night covers the stars, veils all hope and slackens those standing tall. I see war in Rohan, destruction upon all. Nice. That's good awesome. Stuff. That's real good. R real good. Mm hmm. Um, like, not really good, but like real good. Real good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mary Grace. Knocked out of the I love park. Your, I love your again. poetry. I love your poetry. Yes, keep it coming. Um, it's good stuff. Mm -hmm. It's good stuff. I might just, I might actually post that as part of the, uh, part of the blog post. You should. Yeah. You should. Mm, claim it for my own. Um, no, <laughs> give credit where credit is due, but put it Fine, on your website. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. No, that was really good, Mary Grace. That was, that was really great good. stuff. Yep. All right. Well, All right. Um, next time wrap. that is a wrap. Next time we'll finish uh, this chapter. And uh, never too late, you know, not too late to send in more haiku if you want to for this chapter, for the second mm -hmm. part especially. Yep. So please yep. do. It's due on uh, 12 14. And uh, we will we'll talk at you next time. Yeah. We'll be here. So should you. That's right. All right. Thanks for listening, guys. Yep. Thanks, everybody. Bye bye. Bye, y'all. Please remember to check out truemyths.org for show notes and plenty of other Tolkien goodness. Also, if you're enjoying the podcast, would you please leave the Tolkien Road a rating and feedback on iTunes? It's a great way to support the show and takes less than a minute. On our next episode, we'll continue our discussion of Book 3 with the second half of Chapter 6, The King of the Golden Hall. Thanks for listening, and until next time, the road goes ever on. 